Hello lovelies, in this video the Brilliant Mr Me is going to be looking at simplifying ratios for your GCSE math. Now there are lots of examples here, work through really slowly. So what I want you to do is to use the timestamps to jump between the level you think you want to start at and then pause the video, have a go at the question yourself and then watch the answers being worked through and see how you got on. We're going to have a look at various ways of writing ratio and we'll start off looking at the relationship between fractions and ratios. So question one, it says write a fraction of triangles and then we've got a few little pictures. We've got three triangles and we've got four squares. So let's look in detail in what we have. So firstly we have the triangles, so I'll label that, and we have three of those. We have the squares and I'll label that, we have four now there's one other thing to look at, and that is the total. Now with a total, that's how many symbols we have all together, and you can see that three plus four would give us seven, so the total is seven. Now the question is asking us to write the fraction of triangles. So to try a fraction, what you need to do is have a numerator and a denominator. The denominator of a fraction is going to be the total, and the numerator is going to be the part that you are looking for. So looking at question one, write the fraction of triangles, we have got three triangles, and we're gonna write that as a fraction over the total, which is seven. So the answer is three out of seven. Three of the seven symbols are triangles. So let's try the same thing for question two. So the first thing to do is identify what you have. We have got four circles. We have got two squares. And we have got one triangle. And the total would be all those symbols added together. So four plus two plus one, which is seven in total. So we want to write the fraction of triangles. Again, we're going to write part over total. The part representing triangles, we have one triangle. We write that as a fraction, and it'll be a fraction over the total, which is seven. So we're saying that one out of the seven symbols are triangles. Now, where this changes is question three, where we're not being asked for a uh, fraction anymore, we're being asked for a ratio. Now, the way we write a ratio is we have one part, it's the part that we're talking about first, and then the second part, the part that spoke about second. And in between the two parts, we have a colon symbol. So looking at question three, again, like before, identify the symbols that we have. So we have got two squares and we have got three triangles and the total of all those symbols two plus three is five for the total as a ratio this is a ratio of squares to triangles we're going to write the part for squares first two we're going to write the part for triangles second three and in between those two numbers, we're going to have the colon symbol, two dots above each other. And you'll notice for this time, we didn't actually use the number for the total. We just used two parts. Let's try that for question four as well. So again, identify the symbols first. So we have two squares. This time we've got four triangles and the total will be two plus four. There are six parts all together. So to write it as a ratio, it's part to part. Now the thing here is which part comes first? And it's always the part that's mentioned first in the question. Now, in the question, we have megals first. So triangles will be the first number that we write down. And we have got four triangles. Squares is the second number, uh, second word that's written down. And there are two squares. So the numbers are in, in the order they are spoken about in the question. And again, we'll have the colon symbol in between. Question five, for the same rules. Firstly, identify what you have in the question. We have got five circles. We have got two squares. And we have got five triangles. 
altogether, 5 plus 2 plus 5, there are 12 parts to this ratio. It's asking us to write the ratio of circles to triangles to squares. So mentioned first, and we have got five circles. Triangles is mentioned second, and we have got five triangles. And then squares is mentioned last, and we have two squares. And you'll notice the five, the five, and the two are a different order to how we originally wrote them out. We wrote them out in the order the symbols appeared, but now we're going to write them in the order the question is talking about them. Finally, in between each number, we're going to have the colon symbol with two circles above each other. It's a five to five to two ratio. So it's all about looking at the question. And you've been asked to find. Have you been asked to find a fraction? In which case, it's one part, the part you're talking about, over the total. Or is it a ratio? In which case, it will be the parts that you're talking about in the ratio, in the order they appear in the ratio, and we're not bothered about the total when we're writing things as a ratio. What you should find though is that the different parts of the ratio should add up to the total. So again, look at the last question, a five, a five, and a two. They do add up to 12, so you can work out the total from a ratio if you need to. Similarly, with the fractions, if you want to find the missing fraction, you just take away from the total. So in question one, it's a three over seven fraction. But 3 take away 7 is going to give us the 4. So we can find out what the squares are, even though the fractions are only talking about the triangles. Moving on to the medium questions, we'll look at simplifying ratios. Now, before you do this, you should have a look at simplifying fractions and watch that video. And with simplifying fractions, let's say we had the fraction 10 over 25. Then if you want to simplify that, what we would do is we would look at a number that we can divide the top by, the numerator, and a number we can divide the bottom by, the denominator. And it's got to be the same number we divide both by. We want the largest number possible. The 10 and 25, you should be able to spot they are both in the 5 times table. So we are going to divide the numerator by 5, and we're going to divide the denominator by 5. You have to divide both numbers by the same thing. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. So we've simplified the fraction. If you type 10 over 25 or 2 over 5 into your calculator, you're going to get exactly the same number come up as a decimal. So it's just a way to write the same fraction with smaller numbers. Now, why am I going through this? Because simplifying ratios is exactly the same thing. So if we had a 10 to 25 ratio, and those numbers should seem familiar, same ones I just used for the fraction. We just do exactly the same thing. We want to find a number we can divide the first part of the ratio by, a number we divide the second part of the ratio by, and to keep these in proportion, it's going to be the same number you divide both by. And we know from the previous question that we are going to be dividing by 5 on both sides. And yeah, we know the numbers here 10 divided by 5 would give us 2, and 25 divided by 5 would give us 5, and those answers need the colon in between two dots to show it's a ratio. So if you're good at simplifying fractions, you're also going to be good at simplifying ratios. It's the same thing. So looking at question one, we're simplifying a 10 to 25 ratio. We've just done that as our example. So we identified that we were dividing by 5, and the answer we got was a 2 to 5 ratio. Now moving on to question two, we've got a 4 to 12 ratio. Our first step is to identify the largest number we can divide both sides by. So you might be tempted to divide by 2 and if you divide by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6 and what you'll notice is those two numbers are both even and we can divide by 2 again. So going to divide by 2 for a second time. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 3 divided by 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that will give us a 1 to 3 ratio. Now there was an alternative here and what we could have done is we could have spotted that 4 and 12 are both in the 4 times table and if we'd done that 4 divided by 4 is 1 
12 divided by 4 is 3. And we would have got to our answer in one step. But if you don't spot the larger times tables, it's okay. Just divide more than once and always check once you've got your answer. Can I divide this again? Question three, we've got a 9 to 15 ratio. So they're not even. You can't divide by 2. Let's try divide by 3. And I think both those numbers are in the 3 times table. So let's try dividing them by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. We've got a 3 to 5 ratio. Just in itself at the end, can I divide these again? And what you'll see is because of both prime numbers, we are not going to be able to divide them again. The only time you can ever divide when you have a prime number involved is if one of the numbers is a multiple of that prime number. Now let's have a look at question four. We've got a 14 to 21 to 28 ratio, and all of those numbers are in the seven times table, so we'll divide by seven. 14 divided by seven is two. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. So that'll be a 2 to 3 to 4 ratio. 2 and 3 are prime numbers, so I don't think we can divide this any further. I could divide by 2 for 2 and the 4, but because I can't divide the 3 by 2 and get a whole number, I can't continue. And that's also a good point to bring up that we want whole numbers for our ratios, we don't want any decimals. Now, looking at the last question, we've got 8. 24 and 24. So you will get repeat numbers in ratios. Now they're all even, so we could try dividing by 2. They are all also in the 4 times table, and we could divide by 4. But if you divide by 2 or 4, you would have to divide more than once, because all three of these numbers are in the 8 times table. And you'll have less steps if you divide by the largest possible number. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. 24 divided by 8 is 3 and for the second one as well. So it's a 1 to 3 to 3 ratio. And do you make sure you have the second 3 in there? If you have repeat numbers, then you need repeat numbers in your answer. Now, the other side of simplifying ratios is that you have equivalent ratios as well. So yes, we can divide ratios and make them smaller, but sometimes you might want to multiply ratios and make them larger. So let's have a look at question one. We have got a 2 to 3 ratio do you work out know, this is the best way to do it i'm gonna underneath that write the second ratio i've been given and i want a 14 to something ratio and i've got a question mark there so we're trying to find what that missing number is now if you write it vertically like this and you see the working out for the medium questions as well we'll do exactly the same thing we'll look at a number that will get us from two to four and then we have to do the same thing from three to our missing now, if you're getting smaller, it'll be a divide, but because you're getting larger, it's going to be a multiply. And you should spot that 2 multiplied by 7 will give us 14. So if we're multiplying the left side by 7, we'll also have to multiply the right side by 7. And 3 multiplied by 7 will give us 21. So the answer is 21. It's a 14 to 21 ratio. That's exactly the same proportion to a 2 to 3 ratio, but we're just using larger numbers to write it. If you're mixing a drink and you mean some orange squash, and you want two parts orange squash to three parts water, then that would give you quite a small glass. Maybe it's two centiliters of each. But if you add four centil 14 centiliters and 21 centiliters, it's mixed the same proportion. So it'll give you the same flavour, but you've got more of the drink because you're using larger numbers. Now, I would recommend drawing the diagram as I've drawn it every single time in exams, but a faster, faster way of doing it might be, I'm just going to highlight the clues I've got. I've got the 14, which is the first number, so that's my clue. And so that matches up with the first number in my original ratio, which is the 2. And then you're just going to think, well, how do I get from the 2? 14 and going to times by 7. So when we're looking at how to do question 2, look at the clue you've got. The clue is the first number, the 16. Think of what it matches up with. It will match up with the same position in the original ratio. So how do you get from 2 to 16? Well, 2 times 8 is 16. So for multiplying that by 8, I've also got to multiply the 9 by 8 as well. And 9 times 8 would give us 72. So it would be a 16 to 72 ratio.
let's look at question three. So again, identify the clue. The clue is the first number, so it will match up to the first number in the original ratio. Identify what you would multiply the first ratio by to get the second ratio, and five times six would give us 30. So multiply both numbers by six. So we know five times six is 30. Eight times six would give us 48. So it'll be a 30 to 48 ratio. Question four, same method. This time the clue is the second number. So that will match up with the second number in the original ratio. So the ratio is always written in the same sequence. So we're not going to be swapping the numbers around at any point. How do we get from 9 to 54? Well, we would have to multiply by 6. So 5 times 6 is 30. And we know that 9 times 6 is 54. So it's a 30 to 54 ratio. Finally, question five. Now we've got three different numbers here and you can have three parts to ratios. The clue is the middle number. So in my original ratio, I'm going to look at the middle number. So how do you get from four to 24? It's going to be another multiply by six. So multiply all three numbers in the ratio by six in the same order you see them in. So one times six is six. 4 times 6, we knew it was 24, that was a clue. And 5 times 6 is 30, so it's a 6 to 24 to 30 ratio. Ouch! This is when some videos I've explained scratches.